Hi, my name is Eddie Cunningham, and I'm going to be presenting our paper that was recently accepted to AI Stats. It's called the Change of Variables Method for Rectangular Matrix Vector Products. And in this paper, we show how to apply rectangular matrix vector products to normalizing flows. A normalizing flow is a bijective function that takes a simple random variable from in a known base density and transforms it into something that we hope looks like data. So if X is data, um, we can compute the probability density of X under this model using the change of variables formula. One such transformation is the matrix vector product. If we have a square matrix A, we can relate X and Z um, through the equations X equals AZ and X equals uh, Z, Z equals A inverse of X. And because we have this bijective map between X and Z, we can apply the change of variables formula to compute the density of X. However, if A is not square, we can't compute the density of T um, using just a tall matrix vector product. And to see this, we first have to consider the image of A. So the image of A is all of the points that we can map to from S using the matrix vector product. And unfortunately, this image is only a hyperplane in the, in the 3D space. So any points that lie off of this hyperplane can't be represented by the model. So we won't be able to assign a density to it. To get around this, we need to come up with a new bijective mapping between T and S that, uses, that relates T and S specifically with a matrix vector product. And to do this, we first notice that um, any point T can be represented as a combination of a point on this hyperplane and an orthogonal component. So if we name the point on the hyperplane AS, again, that's a point that we can get with this matrix vector product and add this orthogonal noise to it, which is denoted by U perpendicular epsilon, then we can uniquely identify every possible T. And this mapping is also bijective. If we have a T, we can uniquely identify the epsilon and S that generated it. Because we have a bijective map, we can apply the change of variables formula and we have a density equation for a T. Now, if we consider the inverse problem where we have a low dimensional vector S and we assume that it was generated from a wide matrix vector product um, and we wanna find the density of S, it's also not straightforward. The first step to figuring out what the density of S is, is we have to find what possible vectors can map to it. A simple solution is just AS. We can go to a vector T equals AS and back from T to S using the wide matrix vector product with the pseudo inverse of A and back with the regular matrix vector product with A. However, this isn't a unique solution. In fact, there's a space of solutions that map to the exact same S. And this space of solutions is characterized by the null space of the pseudo inverse of A. So again, we use this orthogonal component called U, perpilon, U perpendicular epsilon to index into this null space. And when we add this orthogonal component to an existing solution, uh, which we fix at AS, then we can uniquely identify any point on this space of solutions. So our final density is just going to be the integral over all the possible, over the densities of all the possible solutions. And we see that this has a lot of similar features to the tall matrix vector product. And this isn't a coincidence because it, it turns out that the tall matrix vector product is the stochastic inverse of the wide matrix vector product. In order to apply both of these algorithms, we need access to this U perpendicular matrix. Usually this is obtained through the singular value decomposition of A. However, this can be really slow and memory intensive if A is high dimensional. Instead, we propose a scalable method to not have, to not only need U perpendicular, but instead, um, this other matrix that accomplishes the same goal of projecting onto that null space. 
which is u perpendicular times its transpose. And computing this matrix is much easier than um, computing u perpendicular on its own. So some careful with some careful derivations, we're able to derive the log likelihood of this scalable model. And we showed that its runtime and memory requirements are much less than existing algorithms. And in our results, we showed that our method is able to scale to higher dimensions while the existing methods were, they ran out of memory requirements and failed much earlier. So in conclusion, we found, or we showed how you can apply matrix vector products to normalizing flows and linked the tall MVP and wide MVP together through the stochastic inverse. And we also introduced a scalable algorithm that can let our approach scale to really high dimensions. Thanks for listening.